Kindergarten. One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Berry's door. Come quickly, Berry, or we'll be late. Berry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us. We're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses, fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Berry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Berry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands. Mrs Bumblebee shouted, then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down while Mrs Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence, and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings, with a big wooden train in the middle. Berry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Sandcastle. 
On a sunny summer day, Berry, Dolly, Bubble and Balthazar put on their swimming costumes, grabbed their buckets and spades and set out for Sand Island to build castles. Look at this huge watermelon! Balthazar said in surprise. Oh, let's take it with us. Then we can all have a feast at the end of the day. OK, Berry, we'll take it. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Bubble carefully rolled the watermelon in front of them. But when the friends got to the top of the hill, the round watermelon started to roll away down the slope. Stop it! Dolly shouted to the others. Bubble pounced on the watermelon, but he couldn't stop it. The baby beetle slipped off and bumped his head. The juicy watermelon just carried on rolling. They all ran after it as fast as they could, but the watermelon was much faster than all of them. Then a terrible thing happened. The watermelon got to the bottom of the hill and smashed into a sharp rock. Our lovely watermelon smashed into pieces. Oh, the watermelon! Balthazar was very sad too. Why are you all complaining? Let's eat it instead, the baby beetle suggested. So the four friends sat down and started to munch on the watermelon. They ate the sweet red fruit until their tummies were full. We'd better hurry to Sand Island or there'll be no time left to build sand castles. Dolly, wait for me, I'll fly with you. Balthazar said. Me too, Bubble added. But I can't fly. Are you three going to leave me here? Berry asked with a sad sob. Let's build boats out of the watermelon rind. This way Berry can sail to the island with us, Balthazar suggested. They selected four strong pieces of melon rind. One for Dolly, one for Berry, one for Balthazar and one for Bubble. They made the masts out of strong branches and the sails out of large leaves. When they were done, they launched the little boats on the water and the wind quickly carried them away to Sand Island. Hooray! We're sailing! Berry said with an excited squeak. They all got to Sand Island with plenty of time left to play. Look, someone's coming and he's got a bucket in his hand. Indeed, there was a cheerful beetle walking towards them on the sandy shore. Who are you? Dolly asked. I'm Sean, the sand beetle. I live here and was about to build a sand castle. Really? Balthazar asked. Can we join you? Of course you can. Let's all build together, Sean said with joy. The five of them built a grand sandcastle with all kinds of tunnels, towers and bridges. Now all it needs is a flag on top. Dolly said, so she drew a picture of Sean on a leaf and stuck it in the very top of the castle. That looks super! Does that mean it's my sand castle now? Sean said enthusiastically. When the sun went in, Dolly and her friends said goodbye to Sean and headed home. Good night, King of the Castle! Dolly shouted waving goodbye to their new friend. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Dumplings. One autumn day, Dolly the ladybird cooked plum dumplings and invited her friends to lunch. Berry came along and so did Balthazar, Stanley and Flutter. The little ladybird girl put three dumplings on each plate. Berry, Dolly and Flutter were soon full. Hmm, 
plum dumplings. I love them. I could eat five, said Balthazar the bee. Five is nothing. I could eat seven. Seven? I could eat eight. I could eat ten, the little stag beetle announced. Then let's have a competition, Balthazar concluded. Let's see who can eat the most dumplings. Dolly didn't like the sound of this, and she tried to talk them out of it, but the boys were determined. It'll all end in tears, she warned, but Balthazar and Stanley wouldn't listen. We've already eaten three dumplings. Now let's eat the fourth, Stanley suggested, and he plopped another dumpling onto each plate. When they had finished, they put another on their plates and ate a fifth dumpling each. After the fifth, they ate a sixth. After the sixth, they ate a seventh. After the seventh, they ate an eighth. And then a ninth dumpling. And now for the tenth. Can you keep going? Balthazar asked. I could eat twice as many, Stanley said with a shrug. The two friends ate so many dumplings that their tummies started to hurt more and more. I'll run and get Dr Owl, shouted Flutter the Butterfly. Dr Owl examined them both and gave them a good telling off. What have you two been doing? I'm not surprised that you've got stomach ache. They ate 15 each, Berry said as he counted the plum stones on the plates. And so it was a draw after all. It was a very silly thing to do. You'll only be allowed to eat boiled potatoes for three days. But the chimney cake man's coming to the forest tomorrow, Stanley complained. I'm very sorry, but there's going to be no chimney cake for you. Come and see me in three days and I'll take a look at your tummies again, Dr Owl said with a scowl, and he flew away home. The very next day, the firebug arrived in the meadow with his delicious chimney cakes. All the forest friends flocked to the stall to sample his tasty wares. I'd like a cinnamon one, Dolly said. And I'd like a coconut one, Berry added. I only want sugar on mine, Flutter shouted. But there were also cakes with walnuts, poppy seeds and chocolate on them. Balthazar and Stanley looked sadly on, but they did as Dr Owl had told them. On the third day, the little bee and his stag beetle friend went to see Dr Owl. Now let's take a look at you, said the elderly owl, as he examined them both thoroughly. You appear to be better. I can see that you did as you were told. We did, Stanley said with a sob, but I so wanted to eat a chimney cake. Stanley and Balthazar said goodbye to Dr Owl and were walking home when the old bird shouted after them. Wait one second. I've got something for you here. I saved two chimney cakes for you. You went to the meadow, Dr Owl. Of course. I bought chimney cakes for my chicks and I put two away for you. You did exactly as I said, and so I thought you deserved a treat. Thank you, the two friends said with a smile, and they both threw their arms around Dr Owl. Sea Adventure One summer day, Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird found a colourful storybook. It was packed with pretty pictures of the sea swimming with fish and crabs. And there was another strange animal that Berry had never seen. It's called an octopus, but I've never seen a real one either. Why don't we go to the sea? Berry asked excitedly. But we don't know where the sea is, Berry. I know, let's ask Dr Owl. He knows everything. Do you know how to get to the sea, Dr Owl? You'll need to build a boat and sail down the stream. 
The stream will take you to the river, and the river flows right into the sea. Barry and Dolly thanked Dr Owl for his advice and got to work right away. The three owl chicks happily helped them build their boat. The two friends jumped in and the stream carried them all the way to the sea. Hooray! We're going to see the sea! The wind blew their boat down the stream and then the river. It wasn't long before the vast blue sea was right in front of them. We're here! yelled Barry. He pulled the boat to the shore and tied it to a palm tree. Come on, Dolly, let's dive to the bottom of the sea. The two friends saw all kinds of incredible creatures under the sea. They spotted a big crab and followed it to the surface. Excuse me, can you tell us where we can find a real octopus? Asked Dolly. Hold on to my pincers and I'll show you the little island where the octopus likes to sunbathe. The crab helped them to the island and swam away. The octopus was much bigger than they'd imagined and it frightened them. Berry and Dolly hid behind a big rock. Then the octopus had a good idea. It picked up some pebbles and started to juggle them with its eight tentacles. The little ladybird and the snail crept out from behind the rock. Come over here, the octopus said. I'll show you the prettiest pebbles on my island. Barry and Dolly quickly made friends with the octopus and they all had so much fun. It's time for us to go, said Dolly. Goodbye, it was very nice to meet you. Bye-bye, replied the octopus and gave them both a shiny pebble each. Barry and Dolly got into the boat and tried to paddle away. But it was too hard. Oh dear, Barry, we won't be able to manage. We'll have to get out of the boat. Dolly was really scared. See, Barry, I told you we shouldn't have sailed so far from home. I think you're right, Dolly. But then the stone started to move. Why are you so sad, little snail? The stone asked. This made Berry laugh. It wasn't a stone after all. It was a turtle. My friends, the rainbow fish, are about to begin their long journey. They'll swim up the stream all the way to the source. I'm sure they'd be happy to take you with them. Berry and Dolly said goodbye to the turtle and sat on the back of the captain fish. Then they all set off on their way home. By the time it was getting dark, the fish had reached the clearing where the ladybird's spotty house stood. Berry and Dolly thanked the fish for their help and they swam away. See, Dolly, all's well that ends well the little snail said wisely. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Barry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly! Barry, come quickly! Someone's lying in the meadow! The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? 
I'm Adette the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here, and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak, and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The Oil Beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready! said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Friends. It was a super sunny day and Dolly the ladybird sat staring out of the window. I'm going to eat breakfast, she thought, and then I'll go for a walk in the meadow. She decided to take her wheelbarrow with her. I wonder if I'll find something interesting to take home in my wheelbarrow, she thought to herself. Goodness me, said Dolly. What a lovely red cherry. That's just perfect for my lunch. She tried to lift the cherry into her wheelbarrow, but it was far too heavy. Too heavy for one little ladybird. Just then, <laughs> Berry the snail appeared. Why the sad face, ladybird? asked Berry. I can't lift this cherry into my wheelbarrow, Dolly replied. Don't cry, I'll help you, Berry said with a smile. And the two of them picked the cherry up with no trouble at all. Dolly set straight off home with the juicy cherry. 
now it was Berry who looked sad. Don't you want to share the cherry with me? The snail said and stamped his little foot. I did help you. But I found it first, Dolly snapped. You're not having any, it's mine. Berry was very upset. The two of them started to fight over the cherry. It's mine, it's mine, shouted Dolly. That's not fair, Berry shouted back. They pushed and pulled the cherry until it split in two. Berry and Dolly plopped to the ground. They were very surprised when a green grub crawled out of the cherry. What have you done to my cherry? He grumbled. That cherry was my home. Oh, don't look so upset, the grub said. I know where we can find plenty more. You can eat cherries while I find a new home for myself. Dolly helped the grub into her wheelbarrow and they all set off to look for the cherry tree. When they arrived, they found the ground around the cherry tree was covered in ripe red fruit. Berry and Dolly jumped for joy. The grub fell fast asleep while Berry and Dolly munched away on fresh cherries and the time soon flew by. It was getting late, so they decided to go home, but this time with two cherries. One for Dolly and one for Berry. The sun was setting by the time they reached Berry's house. They took his cherry out of the wheelbarrow and said goodbye. Berry went inside and waved to Dolly from the window. Berry soon fell fast asleep after such an exciting day. The little snail dreamt about playing in cherries with Dolly and eating until their tummies were full. Then Dolly got back home and went straight to bed. From that day on, Berry and Dolly were the best of friends. The water snail. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting around in the meadow. I wish I had a cousin too, a distant snail relative, Berry sighed. But you've got a sort of cousin, Berry. The water snail is a kind of snail, Flutter the butterfly said. Really? Berry jumped to his feet with a grin. Where does this water snail live? Nowhere. I don't think there's such a thing as a water snail. Oh, yes, there is. I know where he lives. He's got a little house deep down in the round pond on the other side of the forest. You're talking nonsense, the bee said. Why don't we go down to the round pond to see for ourselves? Come with me. I'll take you. Hedgehog Harry told his friends, we can be there before it gets dark. Hooray, Berry whooped. I'll bring the air tank so we can swim down to the bottom of the pond. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar hopped into the hedgehog cart and set out for the round pond. It was late in the evening by the time they finally caught sight of the pond. The cart's running away, the little bee shouted, but it was already too late. The hedgehog cart rolled right into the water. It's too late to do anything today. Let's go to bed and tomorrow you can all swim down to the bottom of the pond. I'm sure you'll find the cart, Harry comforted them. 
Berry woke up bright and early the next morning. Look, the water lily has opened its petals and there's someone standing on its leaf and he's waving at us. Who are you? Hello, everybody. My name's Sam Snail and I live deep down at the bottom of the round pond. See, Balthazar, water snails do exist after all. I've got my own proper cousin now. Sam Snail didn't understand why Berry was so happy to see him. But then Dolly told him why they had come. I'm so happy to meet you, Cousin Berry, the water snail said. Would you help us find our cart that rolled into the water, Sam? Flutter asked. I'd be delighted. Follow me, the water snail said. So the four friends slipped into their swimming costumes and swam all the way down to the bottom of the pond. This is where I live, Sam Snail announced with pride. <laughs> they heard a frightening hissing sound that scared Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar who hid behind the house. Don't be scared, it's my friend the water snake. Water snake, have you seen a cart at the bottom of the pond by any chance? Hang on to me and I'll take you there. There it is. The water snake hissed. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Flutter were happy they'd found it. You did it, said Harry. He was so happy to see his little friends again. Let's go for a trip on the pond, Sam Snail suggested. They all sat on the lily pad and Sam Snail started rowing. It's time we were going, Dolly said when it began to get dark. Oh, let's stay a little longer, Berry pleaded. We'll come again another day. Flutter reassured the little snail. Harry Hedgehog was already waiting for them. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar all said goodbye to Sam Snail and headed for home. The next day, Berry and Dolly both painted colourful pictures of their distant cousins. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Rainbow It was a rainy summer day. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat sadly underneath a giant leaf. Then the sun came out and the sky was blue again. But the shower didn't stop. And soon a colourful rainbow stretched across the sky. It's beautiful, they shouted. Berry thought it would be a good idea to climb up the rainbow and slide down on the other side. But his first try didn't work. I think I'll try from the other side, he said. Trust me, you can't climb a rainbow, Dolly said to the excited snail. But then Berry came up with a new plan. I'll use a ladder. Oh, Berry, I don't think it's a good idea, Dolly said anxiously. <whistles> Dolly was right, and Berry was angry. Dolly tried to distract her friend. Come and play something else. But Berry still didn't give up. Look, Dolly, I'm sure I can jump on top of it from here. But that idea didn't work either. Dolly ran over to Berry. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine, Berry sulked. Berry was very sad and Dolly tried everything to cheer him up. I got you some flowers, she said kindly. But Berry couldn't be comforted. Then the rain dried up and the rainbow disappeared. They walked home hand in hand and Dolly said nice things to the little snail. Chin up, Berry. It's your birthday the day after tomorrow and I'm sure you'll get some super presents.
Dolly had a great idea when she got home. I'll make a rainbow slide for Barry's birthday, she said to herself. Then his dream can come true and he can slide down a rainbow. Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly helped her. Balthazar, Dolly and Flutter painted the slide with colourful paint, wrapped it in yellow paper and tied it up with a blue ribbon. The three friends even baked a cake for Berry. When the time came, Balthazar and Flutter took Berry to Dolly's house, where everything was ready for the birthday party. Let's give him his presents, yelled Balthazar. And Dolly gave Berry the chocolate cake. A real rainbow, a rainbow slide. Can I try the slide? Sure you can, Dolly replied. Berry liked the rainbow slide very much. He slid on it again and again. Flutter and Balthazar were so happy they started to dance. You know, Dolly, said Berry, it really is a nice present. Thank you. Lots of friends joined in the birthday celebrations. There was Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle, Zephyr the Dragonfly and even Stanley the Stag Beetle came. The little snail let everybody try his new slide. Berry, Dolly and their friends played on the slide until it got dark. Berry went to bed very happy that day. What a wonderful birthday I've had, he sighed with a smile.